Hello, I'm Shia Lamorg from Codename One, and I'll be presenting this workshop in Java Zone uh, 2014. Hopefully, uh, the internet at large would find this interesting as well. So, uh, if you want to learn about the basics of building a simple internet based Codename One application, uh, hopefully, this will teach you a thing or two. So I'll briefly talk about who I am uh, just uh, to cover the basics. Uh, I'm obviously uh, the co-founder of Codename One. I'm, I've been in this industry for quite a while now, worked with practically everyone that's interesting in mobile and have been with Sun Microsystems as a consultant uh, since the 90s practically. Uh, I'm very deeply involved in Java and the Java community. I've been working on VMs and everything for a very long while. So let's talk a bit about mobile and devices first, then we'll move on to the actual meat and potatoes of this presentation. So the first thing when we talk about Codename One that we get from people is uh, why aren't you using existing technologies? Why not just go with Swing, Java FX, or something like that that we're already familiar with? Why build uh, something completely different? Why is mobile so different? Well, these are the core uh, issues with mobile that make it completely different when compared to pretty much anything else out there, whether it's web or desktop. Now you can take uh, technologies built for web or desktop and make some adaptations, but it's difficult. And I've condensed it into the top five things that I think are really different about mobile and I'll go into them uh, more in depth uh, in, the in the following slides. So the first thing is the density, the amount of, the amount of pixels you can cram into a screen it is not only much higher for devices, it's ridiculously uh, variant between devices. There's certificates, which is code signing and provisioning, which is a whole level of complexity. There's changes, which is uh, a really, there, there's lots of changes on devices going on all the time. And keeping up with that is a whole order of magnitude different from keeping up with changes that go on the, on the desktop. Uh, iOS builds require a Mac. Uh, Windows Phone builds require a Windows machine. Uh, this uh, starts becoming a problem if you want to target multiple devices. You need a Mac or you need a Windows machine, depending on if you want to target Windows Phone. And sometimes even having a Mac isn't really practical if you're in a corporate environment, uh, at least some corporate environments. And the last, and but not, not least, is the issue of size, uh, the size of distribution and performance. Now, a lot of us look at these machines and they think, wow, they're really, really powerful or they're really, they have a lot of capacity. But this isn't remotely close to the, the things we have on the desktop. And so keeping the size of an application small is uh, crucial. Normally with Java, we can rely on things like JITs to optimize considerably and do a lot of things that we wouldn't be able to achieve normally and that way enjoy a much smaller distribution size. We can also dynamically download classes and things like that. With uh, mobile applications, uh, you're not allowed to download code because that would obviously pose a security risk that you're uh, circumventing the security uh, aspects that are given in the app stores. Uh, and you're also not allowed to dynamically change code, which is what's required in order to implement a JIT. So the only option when working with Java is to compile it ahead of time or use an interpreter the last of which isn't really practical in terms of performance. So let's go a bit deeper into some of these. The issue of DPI is a lot more, uh, far more complex than what people normally uh, would characterize. It's not just a matter of adapting your resources to the different sizes, it's also doing so intelligently. So one of the things that always hits people uh, when working with Codename One is that an iPad 
has a sim an identical DPI to an iPhone. So if I have an iPad 3 device or a Retina iPad and a Retina iPhone, they would both share the same DPI. So if you look at the images here in these two applications, which are really the exact same application, one of them running on a phone and one of them running on a tablet. Uh, when they run on the tablet, the same picture takes up far less space than it would when running on the tablet. The, uh, the, the exact same space. So the thing is that we want to use the additional space. We don't want the tablet to just have uh, a larger version of the same UI. We want it to contain more information. So we need to build our applications in such a way so it adapts, it actually changes the way it lays out things in order to fit in a tablet. And this is demonstrated very well in this demo, the social boo demo. But it's also demonstrated in many of our applications and it's crucial to use DPI in that way and not try to circumvent it by um, just enlarging uh, the user interface for the device. Uh, the variation is huge. If we look at uh, something like an iPhone 5 and an iPhone uh, 3GS, the difference is exactly uh, double in terms of resolution, which really means four times the amount of pixels. Uh, for instance, uh, 640 pixels for width versus uh, 320 on uh, the iPhone uh, 3. And if you look at Android devices, the variation is much, much, much larger. Uh, we're talking uh, the number of dots per inch changing between a hundred and so uh, dots per inch, all the way up to over 500 dots per inch, which is a huge resolution. So we need to really, really use the UI and we need every pixel to matter. We have to have the UI stretch all the way through so we can't code to a specific resolution. This is a really big problem for uh, some designers. Now, certificates and provisioning is something I'm going to skim over. And the reason I'm going to skim over is because we have a tutorial about that and because it's, I can spend time, the entire two hours, just talking about this particular thing and it's just difficult. Every operating system needs its own signing process. iOS also needs a provisioning profile for every deployment. It's a pain, it's difficult uh, to deploy applications to devices. Uh, Apple actually requires that you pay them $100 before you run an application on your own device. You can't, you can't literally, even in Xcode, even natively, you can't literally press play in uh, their ID Xcode and have your application run on the device that you own. It's just, you have to pay them that $99 per year and uh, get a certificate and go through this process. It's painful. Now, I mentioned changes and I glossed a bit over it. I said there's lots of uh, superficial changes. A great example here is iPhone 5, which Apple announced and 14 days later, it was already in the stores being bought by people. And the reason it's a great example is because developers actually needed to change their application in order to support the iPhone 5 because it had a slightly different resolution. And with native iOS applications, it's actually hard to adapt to that. So people needed to add an additional launch screenshot and uh, adapt the UI to behave correctly when uh, running on those devices and update their version of Xcode Otherwise, it, would, it wouldn't work with the iPhone 5. So all of these things needed to be done in a window of 14 days, which is pretty difficult to begin with, just, just finding out what you need to do in order to support that device. iOS 7 was a similar change where suddenly everything changed and people needed to adapt their applications relatively quickly. Google did the same thing when transitioning to Android 3 and later on to Android 4. And they keep doing that. They completely changed the runtime recently and completely changed a lot of the behaviors in the rendering engine of, uh, of Android. So this goes on all the time. It's a constant uh, fingers to the pulse of the industry that you need to keep in place. And it's really difficult if your profession isn't mobile application development. 
So where do we step in? Well, Codename One is first and foremost op an open source project that allows Java to run on all devices. Uh, it supports iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and actually also BlackBerry and J2ME devices through compatibility layers. Uh, it integrates with all major IDs, Eclipse, NetBeans, IntelliJ, etc. Uh, it's it contains a GUI builder, theme editor, localization tools. Everything is already built in. Uh, it's a project that started at Oracle, uh, at Sun Microsystems actually, uh, over in 2006. And uh, as such, uh, the, the roots of it started at 2006. And as such, it's a very mature project that includes a lot of these tools uh, date back to that era. And so they had a lot of time to evolve to this point. And one of the most core aspects of this platform is the API abstracting the different devices. And that's the Codename One API. And it's an API that's very similar to Swing in many regards because it was highly inspired by it. But we took it uh, to a completely different direction, designed it from scratch to be uh, appropriate for devices and integrated pretty much everything that we always wished Swing to have, like proper styles and themes, uh, far more advanced layouts, uh, separation uh, standard resource file format with uh, supports for DPI resolutions, and animations are built in, transitions are built in, all sorts of things like that. Uh, so we built it for tablets and phones from the get-go. And the thing that makes Codename One unique is the cloud-based compilation we compile the actual native application in the cloud. So our solution to the problems presented earlier is this, we use the cloud. So this is probably the most contended piece of Codename One because everyone wants to, uh, we get a lot of people asking, why can't I build offline? Well, you can when you're working with the Codename One simulator, but we actually have Max in the cloud that translate the Java application into a C application with Objective-C code and compile it using the native Apple tools. So you don't have to have a Mac for Codename One. And the whole process is much simpler because it's, with Codename One, it's just a right click and run this application, uh, build it for the device and then install it right on the device. So that makes things much simpler. You don't need a Mac. And similarly, you don't need a Windows machine because we have Windows machines in the cloud, we have Linux machines in the cloud, and they can build all the native applications for you relatively seamlessly. But that's just the start. The cloud allows us to uh, incorporate the changes really quickly. So when the iPhone 5 came out, we could instantly uh, change the servers as needed. So only uh, we at Codename One needed to actually study the things that need to be done in order to support iPhone 5. We implemented all of that in the servers. And for developers, it was just an issue of sending a new build and bam, your iPhone 5 compatible before the device even launched. And that's really cool. That allows us to actually build uh, things faster and adapt to new standards quickly without uh, complicating the issue for our developers, we make these things very seamless when uh, new things come out. Uh, your source code isn't sent to the cloud, only the jar files are sent to the cloud. And you know, one of the things that we get a lot is, um, well, what if you forgot something? What if some functionality isn't yet available in Codename One? Well, you can have native interfaces and invoke native Objective-C code, native Dalvik code, etc., and just call directly into the underlying operating system and do whatever you want there. So we also give you full control in case you uh, reach a point where we haven't addressed at this point in time yet. So this sort of solves the whole process. And our goal with Codename One was to make Codename One act like uh, as easily as a desktop development environment where you just press play and things work. Obviously, there's the complexities of mobile devices, the reality of the field. And that is why we need uh, the help of the cloud in order to solve uh, this issue. 
So soon in the next segment, I'll talk about uh, the application that we'll build and how this actually uh, translates uh, into code and into building an application.